And the Super Eagles of Nigeria started um, the uh, African Cup of Nations qualifiers for the year 2021 on a bright start. On a good note, um, defeating Benin Republic, two goals to one. Welcome. This is Old Sports, the run longest running independent sports show on Nigerian television. My name is Babajide Guerrero. And uh, well, we can all smile, we can all be happy, we can all, uh, it's not kumbaya yet, but again, it's one way to go um, maximum three points in the bag. We'll go for a quick break. And when we return, I got my team all set and all guns blazing. We'll be right back. And we are back. Time to get that cup of coffee um, now for you to stay awake and go through with us. And it's going to be an interesting show today. Mo makes a return. I like to call her. It's very ridiculous, the kind of name I call her. But even to my hearing, it doesn't sound good. But <laughs> let me just leave it at Mo. Mo, how are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. Always a pleasure to see you. It's good I, to see you again. It's good to be back after mm. that three point of uh, Nigeria Super Eagles. So mm. I'm so good to be back here. Absolutely. They are your boys. We know. Don't worry. We'll go there. We'll get there very soon. <laughs> Remember last week, um, we did mention that just like we had Dante in the studio, that we opened our gates to some new, young, vibrant analysts. And then they came through the ranks. And um, it's a period of showing debut and making them... Um, get into the pool of hot sports. Uh, introducing now will be Joshua Mide, uh, one of the guys who made it through. And then it's good to see Joshua making his debut right here on hot sports. How are you, my man? I'm fine. I'm fine. It's good to be here. Yeah, Thank you, it's my good to see you, man. And uh, I can't wait to get started. Let's yes, go. yes, yeah, yeah. So, uh, like I asked Dante the other day, which player would you like to emulate on your on your debut day? Um, I'll go for Rodrigo. Remarried. Okay. Okay, the lad, he had, he had a hat trick. Yeah, so fair enough. You like trick. goals. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah it's all yes. about goals at the end of the day. It's all about good banter, good conversation right here on Hot Sports. So let's just get right into it. Let me start with you, more. Your boys came through, um, two goals to one. It was a labored in a way victory, but at the end of the day, three points in the bag. Yeah, three points. You know, for everything in life, result is what matters. And they get the result. The three mm. points is in bag now. And Nigeria is known for fighting back. That mm. fighting spirit is there. So... It's good to know that we start the um, uh, campaign on a high. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's right there. It's, it's the most important thing, starting on the high. And uh, remember that the um, Stefan Sessegnon scored the goal first, like, three minutes into the mm -hmm. game. And then Victor Osimhen. Have you been impressed by him so far this season, Mide? Um, I've been very much impressed with Osimhen. Mm. Um, the way, I mean, he has won player of the month in, for Lila. So mm. he scored, he's had how many, how many goals already. So mm. um, basically, I'm just impressed for him because... Mm. He is, he is shown to be a very good talent who has come through the ranks. Absolutely. And, 17. and um, I think um, Up is just guy. He's also said DJ Drogba is his idol. So mm. I know what DJ Drogba did in England and also in African, in the African football. So um, it's, it's great times for Nigerian um, strike force. And I think Osimen is one of the shining lights we have. It looks as if Victor Osimen and um, Chukwesi has a very, very good understanding. And if, if well, manage that particular understanding can blow some to one of the deadliest strike for international football. You know, one thing about football is communication. And what I notice um, between these two is that they have good communication skill. Mm. You know, it's not until when you shout on the, on the field of play before you know where your partner is to get the pass. So the connection is so well. Mm. So I think they are good to go. Considering the fact that they came through from the under-17, under-20, and now in the national team, so they have been together for so, a while, mm. and they are good to go. Absolutely. So we're looking forward to um, more success stories, especially as the Super Eagles of Nigeria take on um, Lesotho uh, tomorrow. We're looking forward to that one as well. Well, for um, Enyimba, the CAF Competitions Cup features is out, and December 1st will be the D-Day for our two representatives in um, Enyimba and Enugu Rangers. And that one will be between uh, the fixture right there is on your screen. Inyimba FC will tackle Pyramids FC of Egypt. And Asania, a union sport, Agreda, a USA of um, Morocco. Of course, they are currently placed 13th in the Botola Football League, aka known as the Pro Moroccan F Professional League. Inyimba are in Group D with um, Asania, union sport, Paradu, athletic club from Algeria. And FC San Pedro from Cote d'Ivoire. Rangers are also in Group A. With Almasri, of course, we know Almasri. Uh, and then Nebudu um, FC from Mauritania, and then Pyramids FC of Egypt. We'll talk about the Nigerian Professional Football League as it continues. Of course, the results on your screen, and then the games also re resume uh, tomorrow, uh, Sunday, uh, November the 17th. We'll see games between FC Fanyumba taking on Rivers United, and then um, Katina United will play Nasra United. I will look forward to everyone going out to all those stadiums and match centers to cheer on your favorite team. We talk a bit of athletics now, and it's bad news for um, champion. I don't know if I should call him a champion still, because 
um, Abraham Kiptum has been banned, guys, for four years. Um, but Mo, the, the least thing any athlete wants in his career, in a career, is to have an issue with doping and ban. But when it happens like this, we don't know, we've not heard from the athletes, but it's a stain on the career regardless of how you want to look at it. I think before the uh, ruling body actually uh, come out with this decision, mm. they have gone through the investigation. Absolutely. So on my own side, I think all these athletes know the rules, so they shouldn't go against it. Mm. And um, the anti-doping of 18, I think there are some things that they need to put in place, like what to eat and what not to eat, mm. because some of these athletes are, are actually doing these things unknown mm. to them. True, very true. Um, but yeah, I, I really understand because there's a time in football that Koloture had issues and then he said he had his, he had one supplement by his wife or something, he didn't know about that. But the bottom line here is that he's been banned for four years uh, by the Athletics Integrity Unit, the AIU. Uh, they see over the uh, integrity issues in sports, including doping, and then um, Kiptum will be banned for four years starting from October the 2018. And that's all his results. His half marathon world record of 58 minutes and 18 seconds he set in Valencia has been disqualified. Unfortunately, this is what happens when, you know, doping have issues and then you have some kind of um, challenges. But um, if I thought he was wrong in all his deeds, I think it's a good thing that he was found. If I thought it was unknown to him, he should be more careful next time. Well, um, Brazil, we call it the Samba Grand Prix. We'll be having the Formula One feel, uh, and it starts, of course, on Sunday, uh, where we will like to see the likes of, of course, the master Louis Hamilton come through. Are you a fan, Mide? Yeah, I'm a fan, actually. Mm. So, uh, we know the F1 season is almost all, all over. Um, construction titles, Mercedes, Hamilton has won. So there are little or nothing left to fight for, except maybe for some personal records mm. for, for Hamilton himself, who may want more successes, like uh, most wins in a, in a season, uh -huh. most podium in a season. So basically for now, it's just about Hamilton trying to um, surpass his personal best in a season because he's almost done and um, everything is, has been wrapped up. Absolutely. I mean, remember that Hamilton has won sixth um, Grand Prix already and then the only human being to have won more here on Earth. We don't know if you thought they are racing in Mars <laughs> or Pluto. But the only person to have won more than Hamilton happened to be um, Marco Schumacher with seven. We talk some boxing now, and um, I, I'm, I'm not really a fan of Amir Khan. I, I don't think he did well with all the IP God. But hey, he's in the odd side of um, 30s, and then he said he's made a considerable amount of money, and then he's never going to go broke, regardless of whatever happens to him in the future more. Because he's sure with his financial management. Mm. One thing is to make money, another thing is to learn to manage it. So I think he knows this, that after boxing, what next? And he, he has prepared for that. Mm. So I think he's good to go. He's actually going to get one more um, payday, and then he said he's going to be retiring um, very, very soon. Uh, and of course, we wish him the very best. But I think he, sh he could have possibly just done more you know, in his career, if at all he managed the old fame quite well. Because at some point, it was actually being spoken in the same light of other people in his division. Meanwhile, um, the bronze bomber, Deontay Wilder, has come out to say, hey, I'm a better mentally um, stronger person than AJ, Anthony Joshua. Are you a fan? Of course. You have to pick one. AJ. AJ, okay. <laughs> People like reasons. playing in Nigeria. Well, <laughs> this, is, this is AJ's adopted mother here. She's sitting for next to me. Yeah. And I also stayed in Chagami a bit, so where he grew up. Oh, so went okay. Went to the same school, Mayflower. So. Oh, nice. Nice. Yeah, I guess. Is it fine if I call you AJ Junior? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. Okay, so um, we'll look at all of this and then you think um, AJ Ruiz and then the winner uh, may eventually fight Deontay. Mm -hmm. um, that's if I thought Deontay wins his own match against um, um, Ortiz and eventually gets to beat Tyson Fury. It looks like there's a lot of hurdles for Deontay. Just one for AJ. But Deontay is saying he's still a very much... Do you guys rate Deontay? Let me start with you, Mo. You know, it's good to make mouth. Mm. There's a, uh, I, I, I would think of why that has a Jose Morillo in the game. Like, even when you can't beat them, you try to bring them down mentally. Absolutely. I think that is what he's trying to do. Mm. But when you compare their uh, feet weight and their record and everything, mm. I think AJ is on the edge to actually win mm. against Ruiz. And if eventually Wider actually skate through all these orders, yeah. AJ is going to defeat him. No from, the, from the adopted mother of AJ, you have his choice. <laughs> trust me. No, you can't hear it better from any other person. Also, we talk about some little tidbits from your gathering at the moment from the EPL. We can confirm that there's a rumor circulating that um, 
Kelechi Hianacho will be on um, loan sometime in January away from Leicester City. Mide, in a way, for football reasons, for the sake of his talent, for the sake of his career, mm -hmm. you think this is a good move? I mean, it's a long time coming. I mean, he should have made this loan move probably in the summer. I think he's one summer lead. So I, I think it's best for Ian Nacho and even Leicester as a whole. Because I think and for his career, he needs to make this loan move. Mm. At least, and not just make the loan move, go to the loan wherever the club may be and then perform. Absolutely. So if he then comes back and then perform again, that's left to see. But he has to take this move and then at least try to get his career back on track. Yeah, I think regardless of um, where he goes to, I think Ian Nacho, I said this before, I'm a fan. I, I, like, I, I mean, I watched Ian Nacho as under 17. He was. It's a phenomenal talent. And then he got to City, maybe the role conversion from, a, from an attacking midfielder to a centre forward changed him. He went to ball cup and there's a lot of challenge going forward. But I think one way or another, Ian Acho has still got that talent right there yeah, in him. And, and, I, and I think that's what, just like you mentioned, role change. I mm. think that's what's going forward now. He has to define because he's gone to the point of career where now he needs to be sure where he wants to play. Absolutely. Because at the, we, we grew up knowing from the last 17, he was playing behind mm, the striker. Behind the striker. Yeah. And then in City, he was converted to striker in Leicester. Also, so where does he really want to play going forward now? Does mm. he still want to be a striker or sure. playing behind? So when, once he decides that, and, and like he said, um, he needs to go to a club where he'll be able to get games, mm. not just, not just a, any club where he'll get games and then perform, and then we'll see, we'll see what, what happens from then. Well, I keep rooting for Ian Acho. I think he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a phenomenal player. But unfortunately, it's not just you know, gelling at this time. Let's just hope he's not going to be one of those guys who was supposed to be a great player, but you know, never made it. Offer but this promising. next person, you want to say, sir? I said just like people who promise so much and then offer. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't let us mention names like Little Messi. <laughs> okay. Yes. So we won't mention Little Messi. Little Messi, we do mention you. All right. So, uh, uh, this particular player just retired. He said he's going to retire at the end of this season. For me, um, I think I'm a huge fan. I, I think he's one of those proper number nines. David Villa, El Guaje, um, the kid Guaje. from Asturian, yeah. is finally retiring. All-time record scorer for, um, for Spain. And then master of the R2, they like to mm. call him. Mm. Uh, <laughs> but Mo, you have any fond memory of David Villa? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I watched him play um, in Barcelona. So I think that's the only memory I actually have yeah. of him. Yeah. And in Barcelona at that time, you know, that combination of him and um, Messi yes. in the midfield, mm. Xavi and Iniesta. Mm. So I, I actually enjoy him play. Absolutely. Mide? Um, yeah, it's one I really, I really enjoy. Yeah. Um, they like I said, master of R2. Mm. Four moments for me, I remember the Champions League final when playing against Mayu. The R2. You need to bring that up. <laughs> of course, I mean, that, I you mean you're just a United Chelsea fan. I, I know you're not wow. I have to chew that in. Wow. I mean, it, it, really? spread and van der Sar, like bread, like butter and bread. We are on I'm national so, TV. <laughs> I should send you out of my studio right now. <laughs> so I remember, I'm David Villa, I'm a huge fan of him. And yeah. um, it's really, that's not an um, iconic number nine. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Spain national all record. And people don't remember. Picture actually forget that in 2008, mm. he was the top scorer in Euros. But Torres got all the credit because he scored the goal against Germany. But actually, De Villa was the one who, who scored the most, who was the highest scorer in the competition. And, and then in 2010, World Cup, he did well also. So for me, I think he also redefined the number nine role True. because he was not a number nine who just stood, who, who was the point man who yeah. stood there. He drifted left True. and right, which is why he made um, the first nine work with Spain in 2010 because he was already a number nine who doesn't stay there. He drifts to the left and wide and also is good with both feet. Sure. So um, it's, it's really a miss to the footballing world and um, we miss him greatly. Definitely, we will miss him. And then we hope that um, strikers, young strikers like the ones that we don't want to mention their name can you know, emulate David Villa, his style and pattern and of course his goals at the end of the day. Let's talk about the big goal of the show today, which is our main issue. Uh, we're asking, uh, should the NFF compel coach Gary Ward to add a percentage of the local players to the team? But we hear that um, a new contract is in the offing and um, it may be included as one of the, um, should we say, criteria or probably one of the requirements in his new contract that he should add a percentage of the team. So what we're asking this morning is, should the NFF compel or should they not? Remember that last time out, we had a good conversation and we asked you to tweet and make conversations and text us, which you did. We'll be taking those particular messages very, very shortly. And remember, you can also get to be part of this particular production. Come on, that's so simple. Just bring out your phone and text us on the number on your screen. Please do not call us uh, because the person that owns that particular number will never pick it. 
Uh, so we're looking forward to you just sending messages and of course going to our social media platforms on your screen at the YouTube and leave your comments. And let us know what exactly is on your mind. We'll go for a quick break and when we return, midday is live and so is Mo. We'll be right back. And we continue with what has been a very good conversation so far. If you're just joining us, you're about to get into the real um, conversation. So um, we got some messages here. We like to please implore everyone that send us messages. Every time you do, do well to include your name and your location. Um, this is coming from Larry. And Larry says, indeed, Super Eagles should have a permanent stadium to use instead of moving around the country. It has to be a stadium where fans will fill the stadium to capacity to support our dear Super Eagles. Um, Adams is saying, um, good morning guys, I'm Adams from Lagos. Please, I'm not in support of Super Eagles having one particular stadium to play for the country. I support Super Eagles. I believe Super Eagles can play in any stadium uh, that is well and suitable. And lastly, I'm Roland. Thanks for a great topic today. Well, thank you for watching. And I think we should have a permanent home to play our game. So yes, you can join this lot that have read their messages by texting at the number on your screen as well to get your own messages read. In my opinion, I think NFF should compel any manager that will be in charge of Super Eagles to ensure they include our local talent. On the contrary, I actually believe the NFF should not compel any Super Eagles manager to include local talents in their squad. So we go right into the conversation, and um, I think I want to allow the lady, of course, we are all gentlemen, right? So the lady mm -hmm. should, should, should comment. Mo, over to you. Uh, one of the reasons why I said NFF should compel um, the Super Eagles um, coach to actually include local talent is because wh what is the essence of a league when you are not going to use them? We have this Nigeria Professional Football League to actually showcase our talent to the world that we actually have a professional league so what will be the essence of this league if you are not going to use some of these players if they are good enough they will, they will use them are they good enough they First are question they are good enough Really? Because Why they are, are good enough. It because depends. It, it, it depends on on how you follow the league. Do you actually watch these guys? No. If you watch them, you know we have talent. We have talent. Did you see them at the Chan at the Chan uh, Nations Cup? No, I won't blame. I won't blame the guys at the Chan so Nations who, who, Cup who, who because that is why we have a squad team, a particular department that actually scored for the best talent. Are they our best talent? That should be the question. Okay, so, exactly. So if they are not the best talent, why do they represent? the local based team at Chan? That question shouldn't be directed. Because, <laughs> because, because, in, because, because, hold on, because basically, if you follow the league, the like of Alimi Sikiru and, and others that I cannot even mention on here now, we have great talent. Mm. Come to think of it, why do you think Nigeria have a representative in every European league? There is no league in Europe now that doesn't have a Nigerian player. Okay, I'll, I'll come to that. Why do you think that is? I'll answer you that. I'll, I'll answer that for you. Because the league here is not up to standard. So what do they have to do? Most of them, what do they do? They go from here to even East Africa. So are you, me, are, you, are you telling me? Are you telling me that a Spanish Africa. a Spanish player that leaves Spain to come and play in Premier League? Are you telling me that the Spanish league? But what is, is the, what is, is the proportion? What is the proportion? Because migra Spanish, let me tell you, let me tell you, tell you migration, you know migration, are, migration, are migration, migration is part of human life. So. Because you are a medical doctor in your country mm -hmm. and you are the best, doesn't mean you cannot travel out of your country to be the best in another country. Yeah. But what I said, why I said NFF should compare this on our coaches is that when you look at the Premier League group, there is a percentage of particular English player that must be in a team. In a club, yeah. In a in, in a team, in yes. a not even in a club, in a starting eleven. Okay. Yeah. There must be it's an cool. English player. Why do you think that is? It's because they want to promote their own local talent. Yeah, but so just like said, in, 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 in the NPFL, they are all Nigerian based or most of them. Do you get so that the rule you are, you are talking about in England already applies. You are talking about the national team here. My point is if they are good enough, they will make the team. Do you get can so, I, so I, I, let me ask okay. a question. Give me one player now or maybe one two who will overtake the the the, 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 the first level. Have you have you seen Ali Misikiru play before? Who, who will he bench in the first level? Have you seen yesterday? Ali Misikiru play? Can you play answer before? that? Who who will you drop? He for can him? bench anybody. Who okay they he can bench anybody. In why, the first do level think, that why do you think why do you think why do you think who will actually invite that defender? That uh, local local player defender. Why do you think he invited of him? Of course, you, you get. We have a squad of twenty five or how many? My but brother, how many my, brother my brother, my brother, my brother. You know the point is, the the is we are all Nigeria. Whether you stay in Nigeria or not, we are all Nigeria. But give these people that opportunity. These people you are inviting, they already play for. Uh, is it a matter of giving them opportunity <laughs> alone? 
or, or give the correct one? How good are these talents? Exactly, that's my question. I you, mean, let, let's let's react to it one after the other. Maybe let me start with you. Okay, that's my question. I'll, I'll ask her now. Should is this percentage should it be included in the contract because we just want to have local based team um, players in our national team, mm -hmm. or because they are actually good enough? We have to differentiate and define what you actually want. Okay, more, more. I need they, you to react. They should to that. be they should be included because they are good enough. Okay. Because uh, I'll go I'll go by one of Roy's statement that. Uh, they, there was a particular time that it was blamed for not sh uh, including this local talent. And the question came out that how many of these players are still watched play? We have a, a, a national team coach that doesn't stay in Nigeria. He doesn't even follow our local local league. And you're telling us we do not have talent. It's what you see that you can talk of. Mm -hmm. When you watch the league, you know we have talent. We have talent that they are even better off this team that we have now. But who are watching them? Are there scouts monitoring this talent? No. I'm, I'm loving the conversation, but again, just let's just throw some names in there. Junior Lokosa, uh, Sunusi Ibrahim, those players that scored a huge number of goals more. Are those goals still not good enough to get them into the team, or they are not just good enough to maybe appeal to the coach? Is it what exactly is the problem? Exactly my point, because you know, um, um, there is a saying that when you don't try something, you can actually know the outcome. Mm. If these people are this good, in our bad league. So when you give them that good opportunity to showcase their talent, they are going to give you the best. Okay, you know what they say about um, the one-eyed man in the land of the blind? Mm. Yeah, right. So the, the names you mentioned, Stephen Ode, Lokosa, Inform Mudo, where are they now? Where okay. are they? They are playing. Yeah, but we, we, they are are, are they, they scoring are... the amount of goals they did here? They are scoring goals. They are scoring goals because you don't even follow them. You know, no, way back, it. way back, we have the like of Omoto Yossi who later claimed to play for uh, Benin Republic, and uh, we have Ibrahim Sunusi, a good scorer in the league. But these people are not giving them opportunity to play you for know, national team. You, 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 let me let, hold, on, hold on. Are this scoring that? Do you know, Lokosa, now, where, wherever he is, this is scoring that amount of goals. Where is he? Did you even follow him? That because should be that's the question. Because no if it's coming, I want to go. So I know where I was oh, saying. Who is, who is the correct highest goal scorer of Nigeria? I know where you're Because you are not watching them. I know where you're going. I think, I think, I think the problem, the problem, the problem I think the problem now is the scouting team. Mm. When you scout for the best talent in this league, you will know that we have talent. Because it's not just, for how long are we going to do that? Look at the Spanish national team. Look at England. 90% of the English team actually play in Premier League. Yes. The same too with Spain. So what but is I don't the problem with Nigeria? I don't know they are good enough, exactly. and we actually have good enough and better of player in our whole league. Too. Better than the ones we currently have yes. in the squad. Look at, look at, look at the team. Look at, look, hold on, hold on, hold on, Joshua. Look, 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 look at the team. Look at the team that actually plays. Look at the team that plays for the Republic against Nigeria. Gentlemen, improve our league, and then you see a massive upshoot in the amount of talent that comes through. Personally, that's what I think. Good conversation, even a better conclusion by these lads in the studio, and it's been a good time, really, I can't lie. But this is my final whistle. Should he be compelled? Maybe not. Is it necessary? Maybe not. Is it needed? Definitely. It is indeed needed, and this is because, just like Mo said, I'd like to swing a little bit to her now, where she believes that there are some genuine talents there. I've seen some games at the Soccer Temple, some players from the MFM, a couple of players from Kano Pillars, um, one or two, what he mentioned would be um, Rabi Ali. He has been a fantastic player for Kano Pillars over the years, a veteran, but he really never had a he never had a Super Eagles cap, really. Maybe if he had just one or two, just for the Chan Eagles. What we're saying is, at the end of the day, it, it has to help grow. It's, it's a theory that would see a shoot of quality if at all the right attention is paid to it. As she did mention something about having a coach that doesn't even watch the league having a coach that doesn't have scouts in the league. The last time we had a player in the Super Eagles team from the league was Ikechukwe Zenwa, who barely you know, kicked the ball. That was due to the fact that the league is in sixes and sevens. Now, to Mide's point, Ufio, I would rather like the coach have a solid team of players playing anywhere in the world. Uh, but then again, the ones that are in Nigeria, if they are better than the ones already there, then let them come in. But if they're not better, don't just say because you want to pick for the sake of picking, which I really, really um, successfully admit to. But one thing that is very sure is that our league needs to do better. All parties, all sectors, all players have to do their job. Uh, because at the end of the day, what Mide said is actually true. 
you pay attention to the league and then you see even more upshoot talent. And then if a player can do badly in the Nigerian Professional Football League, think about what happens when he plays right there to the top. We need you to tell us what exactly is on your mind. Text us, um, drop your comment in the comment section as well. We'll be looking forward to getting your thoughts. This is the lot we can take on today's edition of Hotspot. We want to thank you. Remember to cheer the Super Eagles on um, tomorrow uh, as they play Lesotho. Um, Mo, thank you so very much as usual. Thank you for having me. Yes, we will do this again definitely. Midday Josh um, Rodrigo <laughs> did yeah, okay. What it was, yeah, um, what a debut. Well done. Um, thank you for having me. So Absolutely. I really had a great time. Absolutely. Yes, you have a great time. And of course, we will have an encore. We'll do this again and again. Guys, it's been a tremendous time on the show. We want to thank you very much for joining us, especially to the production team. My name is Babaji De Guerrero, and I will see you again next week, Saturday. Till then, take care of yourself and look after each other. Bye for now.